unsynectomy. Before going into unsynectomy in detail, we have to first know what is an unsynect process. It is a part of ethmoid bone. It is a gently curved boomerang shaped bony process which lies almost free within the middle meatus. It partially covers the infundibulum and bulla ethmoidalis and articulates anteriorly with the lacrimal bone, inferiorly with the inferior turbinate and perpendicular plate of palatine. Posteriorly, its free margin is concave and runs parallel to the curvature of bulla ethmoidalis. Superiorly, it has variable attachments, that is to the lamina papricia in 80% cases, in which case it forms a recessus terminalis. The frontal recess here drains medial to its attachment into the middle meatus. Otherwise, it can be attached to the skull base or to the middle terminate, in which case the frontal recess drains into the ethmoid infundibulum. This is a picture showing the first case scenario where the unsynect process is attached to the lamina papricia, which is seen in 80% cases. Here, the frontal recess drains into the middle meatus directly, forming the recessus terminalis. The second and third case are where the unsynect process is attached to the skull base or to the middle turbinate, in which case the frontal recess drains into the infundibulum. Other variations of the superior part are that it can lie free within the middle meatus or may be pneumatized, compromising the infundibulum. This is a sagittal picture after removing the middle turbinate showing the unsynect process. This is the ethmoid labyrinth showing the unsynect process. What is unsynectomy? It is the opening of the infundibulum, therefore called as infundibulotomy. Infundibulum is a key area of pathogenesis of sinusitis in maxillary sinus and anterior ethmoids. The procedure is, first we have to identify the middle part of the free border of unsynect using a ball tip prop, insert it between the anterior face of bulla and posterior border of unsynect into the infundibulum. The first method is a classical technique described by Stamberger. Here, unsynectomy was performed via an incision with either the sharp end of a freer's elevator or a sickle knife. The incision was placed at the most anterior portion of unsynect process, which is softer on palpation in comparison to the firmer lacrimal bone, where the nasolacrimal duct is located. Incised in a convex arch from the antero superior to postero inferior region. This is the picture showing unsynectomy as described by Stamberger. Here, the sickle should not extend more than 3 to 4 mm through the unsynect and should always be kept parallel to the lateral wall to avoid injury to the lamina papricia. Then, using a Blakeski forceps, we have to grasp it at the free edge and remove it. Complete unsynectomy is important for subsequent visualization. The second technique is where a small reverse cutting forceps is inserted into the middle meatus and opened in the vertical plane of meatus. The open blade is then rotated through the 90 degree to engage the posterior edge of unsynect process at the junction of vertical and horizontal part. The reverse cut should go cleanly through the entire thickness of unsynect and thus dividing the horizontal and vertical parts. The upper part is then rotated medially with the ball prop, then grasped and removed with a posteriorly directed force. The horizontal part is then medially rotated and removed with a straight through cut force. The third technique is a swing door technique which was described by Wormold and McDonnell. In addition to the lower cut by Backbiter as described in the previous procedure, a cut was made in the superior margin near the axilla of middle turbinate to form a flap from the unsynet which is hinged on the anterior margin and can be moved with an elevator or ball prop. Then angle through good forces were used to grasp the free edge of the unsynet and to remove it. This was followed by submucosal removal of the horizontal process of unsynet and subsequent trimming of the mucosa to fully visualize the maxillary ostium. The upper part of unsynect process is hidden by the attachment of middle turbinate and unsynectomy by any technique does not remove the uppermost part. Therefore, a ball prop or forceps or a drill is used while dissecting in the region, in this region of the frontal recess. This is a picture showing a backbiting forceps taking a bite between the vertical and the horizontal portion of the unsynect process. Another incision is given near the axilla of the middle turbinate forming a swing door. This is another picture showing unsynect process and its relationship with the infundibulum. Coming to Parsons window, what is the Parsons window? In a child with persistent maxillary sinusitis, relief can be obtained by just removing a part of unsynect process at the junction of the horizontal and the vertical portion. 
It is done using the Ostrom's reverse cutting forceps. The Parsons window thus created allows drainage of secretions and ventilation of the maxillary cells. In a hypoplastic and laterally rotated pancinet process, the infundibulum is very shallow and if uncinectomy is done using sickle knife in such case, it is easy to transverse the infundibulum and enter the orbit accidentally and injure it. In such case also, a Parsons window can be created and then the uncinet process can be removed without damaging the orbit. Thank you.